Hello and uh, welcome to this course titled An Invitation to Mathematics. So, we will start out by talking about polynomials which are uh, one of the very basic uh, objects in mathematics. So, we have polynomials. So, uh, let us start by giving some examples of polynomials. So, I wrote down two examples of polynomials. So, typically a polynomial looks like a combination of various powers of a variable in this case the variable x and notice that in addition to the variable itself. So, in addition to powers of the variable what you have are some coefficients some numbers which multiply them for instance you have the number 1 by 10 multiplying x power 10 we have 2 by 3 multiplying x you have a constant root 3 and so on. So, the, the general formal definition of a polynomial is well it is an expression of the following form. So, a polynomial is an expression of the form a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square and so on till a d x power d where what are all these various things where. So, firstly what is d? d is greater than or equal to 0 an integer. So, it is it is greater than or equal to 0 and so maybe a better way to say it is d is a non negative integer and what are the what are these a i. So, they are what are called the coefficients. So, and what are a i s. So, a 0, a 1, a 2 till a d are what are called the coefficients and they can be numbers of various kinds. So, for instance we can have coefficients which are real numbers, they are they could be complex numbers, they could be integers and so on. So, what are these coefficients? They are uh, could be real numbers, complex numbers, integers. So, you can have various restrictions on what kinds of coefficients are allowed. Okay. Now, this number d here, so observe that when you have a, a combination of powers of x, you can always assume that d is the largest power of x which appears. Okay. So, here are very small observations note that we can assume that a d is not 0. So, that is the first observation we can always assume that d is the largest coefficient which appears. Uh, point number 2 some of the other a i's could very well be 0. So, we are not forbidding that for instance in the second example here the degree d. So, this number d is called the degree uh, d is 10 because it is the largest power of, of x which appears, but you do not really have all powers of x appearing. So, you do not have x power 9, you do not have x power 8 and so on. So, you could have other powers. So, uh, some of the other a i's could be 0, some of the a i's could be 0, there is no problem with that. And uh, I just wanted to say the, the terminology d is what is called the degree of this polynomial. the largest power of x which appears and so 
let us see what, uh, what else is there about the degree itself. So, here are some, some simple properties of the degree that will often be useful. So, firstly the degree is, so the degree of the 0 polynomial is not defined. So, what do we mean by the 0 polynomial? So, observe when we say the 0 polynomial we just mean think of you know all the ai's as just being 0 there is no no power of x which appears it is only a constant term the constant term is 0. So, in this case the degree is not not really defined because the, uh, you know remember the degree was supposed to be the largest power of x which appears with a non 0 coefficient ok. Now, since no power of x really appears in in the 0 polynomial you do not really define the degree for the 0 polynomial. So, this guy does not have a degree. Um, so, here is another way of saying this we just shorten degree to deg, deg of 0 is not defined you only define degree for non zero polynomials. Now, if f and g so often we will we will use some symbol to denote a polynomial. So, for instance we could call this polynomial as f of x ok or you know we will use other symbols as well g of x and so on. So, we have degree of so if f and g if f of x and g of x are non zero polynomials then degree of their sum so let let's call it f of x plus g of x is less than or equal to the maximum of the degrees and so this is property 1 property 2 says the degree of the product f of x times g of x is exactly the sum of their degrees degree of f of x plus degree of g of x ok. So, we have what have we done so far we just define what a polynomial is it is an expression of that form we have said what the coefficients mean the coefficients are just these numbers in front uh, we have said what the degree means it is the highest power of x which appears and what we have done is written down some simple properties of the degree. So, observe that while we did this I have sort of silently slipped in two things two operations here I have said something about a sum of two polynomials and the product of two polynomials ok. So, this is these are just the natural operations on polynomials. So, here are uh, here is uh, basically the following question what can you do with polynomials what can one do with polynomials what sorts of operations can you can you subject them to. So, there are several different operations. So, one is the sum the other is the product. So, let us write each of them one sum. So, what does the sum of two polynomials mean? Suppose I have two polynomials f of x and g of x. So, ok, with the assumption that a d is not 0, and I have another polynomial, let us say b0 plus, and it could go to a you know it could have a different degree. So, let us call that degree something else. So, I will call it uh, let us say b e x power e. Okay. So, d is the degree of the top polynomial e is the degree of the, the second polynomial. Then the sum is just defined sort of term by term. So, how do you define the sum of the two polynomials in the obvious way. So, I assume this must be familiar. So, we just take a 0 plus b 0 
as the constant term and then you collect coefficients of like powers of x. So, for x the coefficient is now a 1 plus b 1 and so on and observe that while doing this you might at some point run out of powers of x because for instance if uh, the second polynomial has higher degree than the first adding them uh, for instance until degree d you could of course you, you will be able to collect coefficients beyond that it will happen that uh, g has more terms than f okay, in, which, uh, in which case you just treat the coefficients of those things as 0 here. So, for example, if e is bigger than d I would sort of pretend that the, the other powers of x do appear with coefficient 0 for instance. So, you would think of it as 0 x to the d plus 1, 0 x to the d plus 2 and so on till 0 x power e. Okay. So, that is the way you do the addition you just keep going all the way till you reach the you know the highest power of x. So, I am not being too formal about this and similarly the product again is the familiar operation f of x times g of x. So, you write these two things out and then you just use the distributive law and just expand the whole thing out. Okay. So, when you do this for example, uh, I will multiply these two things out I will get. So, a 0 b 0 will be the, the constant term to get a coefficient of x I need to multiply a 0 with b 1 x and a 1 with b 0 x I mean b 0 with a 1 x. So, this is plus a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0 times x and then to get a coefficient of x square similarly notice you will have to have a 0 b 2 uh, b 2 x square. So, let us write that down a 0 b 2 x square a 1 b 1 will give you an x square and a 2 b 0 also give you an x square and you keep going you just multiply the whole thing out completely and whatever you get is called the product of the polynomials. Okay. So, these are both just the, the obvious uh, operations on polynomials. So, one other operation is you can substitute. So, I, I sort of also wrote product here. The third thing you can do with the polynomial is to substitute values for x. Okay. So, you treat it like a function. So, if I have a polynomial f of x, so again the obvious thing say I give you x squared plus 2x, then I plug in various values for x. So, imagine I am plugging in various real numbers and I could sort of see what happens. So, for instance, if I plug in x equal to 0, this gives me 0. If I plug in x equals 1, it gives me a 3. Uh, x equals 2 gives me 8 and so on. So, I could think of various values for x and of course, the usual graphical uh, pictorial depiction of this is by the graph of the function. So, you plot the x and the y axis along the x axis you, you plug in various values for the, the variable x in this case let's call it x and along the y axis you plot the values of the polynomial f of x. So, for instance at, at 0 the value is 0 at 1 we said the value is 3. So, so x equals 1 y equals 3 that is this point and at 2 the value is 8. plot this point and so on and of course, you join all them all of them up by a curve and we sort of get the, the familiar parabola in this case. So, that is just a pictorial depiction of this polynomial itself it is a graph of this polynomial. Okay. So, again something that should be very familiar and this brings us to the notion of a root of a polynomial. So, what is the root? Of the polynomial f is just a value at which the, the polynomial becomes 0. So, you say that x is a root of f, x I am sorry, x equals a, let us say, is a root 
uh, x equals a is a root of f if when you plug in the value a the polynomial becomes 0. So, in this example there there are two roots there are two values at which the polynomial takes the value 0. So, one of them is of course, 0 and the other is minus 2 ok. So, to find the roots again this is the standard procedure of solving a, a quadratic equation I have x square plus 2 x and I want to know what are the values of x which make this 0. So, we have x times x plus 2 is 0 and we solve this to find the two roots ok. So, I am just sort of reviewing the various uh, familiar facts about polynomials. Uh, 